Rock and Pat here. All right, guys, it's another hot rocking day in the jungle. Man, it is already hot out there, and we are on our way to 105 today. It was about 108. That's AM right there. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. All right, guys, so what we're doing, this is going to be our first video on doing an LS swap on a 1985 Cadillac Fleetwood Brougham. I don't know what the hell Brougham means. Hell, I don't even know what Fleetwood means. Hell, man, what the hell? They come up with some names, right? At least the Corvette, you know damn good and well that that was a Navy ship. All right, guys, so here's what we got going on in our rocking and a rolling and a rolling and a rocking. I have figured out all the little nuances that I needed to figure out. Uh, special thanks to Snydertron. Uh, they uh, did one of these and didn't put out a lot of actual what did he use or anything, but I was able to discern enough information that I knew it was going to work out to my favor. Uh, if you haven't been here on this and you're one of the people that are seeing this video uh, because you're interested in doing this yourself, hey, I don't know a damn thing about what I'm doing here. I'm just figuring it out as I go, but I'll show you what I do because I know I'm going to get it in there. Uh, this is going to be a 5.3 liter with a 4L60E out of a 99 Chevrolet pickup truck. Uh, we got the computer, everything. We're gonna go through the steps of how to change this thing. Now, what I have figured out is important things. I have figured out my engine placement. I have figured out my uh, engine mount. And I'm not gonna show you everything about the engine mounts or anything like this particular moment. We're gonna go back at when we're ready to actually assemble it. We're still just in mock-up stage right now. So I've got everything together. Uh, but this is what I got going on. Uh, you can see that there's an engine block in here. I have the right pan that I'm gonna use already on the car. Uh, it is a low profile pan that I picked up off of eBay. It ran me 180 bucks to the door. Uh, came with everything you need. Pan gasket, uh, pickup screen, all of it. The engine mounts. The engine mounts are from the El Camino. They are 76 El Camino engine mount. They were like 18 bucks at O'Reilly's for a pair. And the clamshells are off of a 76 El Camino. Now I can't say that they're exactly because uh, I have no idea the history of that particular car, but that's where I got that. So that's what I'm using right here. I have got the position where I need it, and you can see closely, there's a few tack welds. Those tack welds won't stay there. They're just there so that I can hold the mount in place while I plop the engine back out of my way. The next thing that I need to do is I am going to uh, pull the engine and the transmission. Now these are just mock-ups. The good thing is they're empty. They're lighter and easier to move around. I have to, because this is Texas and Houston, and it's hotter than blazes here, we've got to make the air conditioning work. In order for me to make the air conditioning work, this piece of the frame needs to be cut out. So you can kind of see where I got a line going. I've kind of pre-marked where I'm going to cut. And then we're just going to flip this over, and with a little bit of work, we're going to make it fit in there. And it'll just be a pocket right there. It'll all be welded back in so that the AC compressor can go in and out of this car without any problems, okay? Uh, I watch a lot of videos of these swaps and there's never any AC compressors. I guess you guys where, live where it's 72 degrees all day long, uh, but us guys down south, we gotta have that AC, man. You cannot be fly in your ride if you are sweating buckets. All right, guys, so that's that. Got the engine mount set. Know what I gotta do with the transmission. The transmission is, this shaft is lined up with where the linkage would go to shift it from the steering column. And since this car already had a 4L, I mean, I'm sorry, a 200R4, it's already got a four-speed uh, shifter in it, so all that problem is already taken care of. Now, back to the mounts for just a second. This car had a 4100 Cadillac engine in it. If your car had the... Uh, the 5.7 liter Chevrolet engine in it with throttle body injection, you can run the engine mount setup that was already on the car. But because this had a 4.1, I had to use the, the, the clamshells on that engine don't match up to small block Chevy clamshells. 
and the little brackets, the adapter plate that I got that we can't really see because everything's in the way, uh, they uh, they wouldn't bolt up, so we had to do that. So back to the back to the fitment what we got going on here. This is the truck intake manifold, and I watched Snyder Trons, and they used the exact same deal, uh, and. They had the same, I was looking to try to get the engine sitting exactly where they did. And the reason why was because this is the only thing that came close. And I still had roughly about a quarter of an inch or so before it even touched the insulation on the top of the, of the, I mean, on the bottom of the hood. So that works. Now the bad thing is, is that this is no problem because we'll be getting rid of this purge valve completely. I'll either tap and plug that hole or I'll do something where I can get a vacuum line to go over to the, uh, to the air conditioning or whatever. But I'll be using that hole for something other than a purge. This, it, this car won't have any uh, EVAP system on it. There's no way to make that work. So this can, get, can go. The throttle linkage has to go right here. Uh, but the bad thing is I'm not going to be able to use that cover. I don't know for sure yet, but I probably won't be able to really test that particular thing until uh, I actually get everything in here and it's final up. But I know I can get it in here and it's not going to be a problem. All right, so that's what's going on right now with the car. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and, uh, or I am going to go ahead and strip this back down, pull the block and the transmission back out of it, and then get started on working on these mount issues. And I'll show y'all what I do there because I'm not going to leave those mounts welded in. I want to be able to have some serviceability on these. These are aftermarket mounts and they ain't always the best. So uh, there may be a time when those have to be replaced. So we're going to make it where we can bolt these in easier than having the bolts through the frame. And if you've ever done this, you know what a nightmare it is. Uh, so I'm going to change how it goes. It's actually just going to use uh, bolts and thread I'm gonna make sure that this, the frame, the K member has threads in it for those bolts so that it uses just a bolt from the outside and none of that crazy shit. All right, guys, well, there you have it. Seven and a half minutes or seven and a quarter minutes of me rambling on about rambling on. And that's what we got on our Cadillac LS swap. All right, guys, well, it's getting hot out here. I got some work to do and I need to get rocking and rolling and rolling and rocking. And for Always keep rocking and a rolling and a rolling and a rocking. And I'll keep grinding it down. Talk to y'all next time.